Greason. Let's talk before we get to Jay. Let's talk a little bet on line. It remains your top spot for all your live betting action and contest. NHL, NBA, UFC in. Full swing NBA playoffs starting next week. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action, along with every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code Believe. As you see, we have a new uh, Believe uh, banner on our. Uh, graphic there, and uh, that's spelled all caps B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, uh, we are recording on Friday, April 12th, uh, late morning. His name is Jay Greason, he's in Chattanooga. What's up, my man? Not much, just uh, wishing I had a uh, Augusta National pimento cheese sandwich in my hand uh, because that is, we all love college football. We all love the joy and the frustration of the brackets. We, we love the, it's hard not to get romantic about sports, but I can preach about the tradition and the pageantry and the glory that is the Masters. And it, 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 it is honestly, without question, my favorite sporting event of the year. Without question. More than the NCAA tournament. Yes, without question. Huh, interesting. Well, okay. but here's the thing. The NCAA tournament is about your sheet. It it is not about whoa whoa, whoa 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 it wasn't about your UConn bet on Monday night. Well, I mean, okay, yes, I mean, okay, great. <laughs> it's about gambling. I if I don't make a wager on Augusta, I'm still going to watch every possible second. Who was your pick to win this week? Did you have multiple uh, well, ones? No, I mean, and, and I hate. See, here's the thing. My pick was Scotty Scheffler. And, and I hate walking chalk, but there is no golf tournament that is more chalk than Augusta National. Doing some gambling research, and, and I share these details with Jay's Plays every day at timesfreepress.com and the 5 at 10. The, there have, of the last 10 years, there have been 117 golfers finishing the top 10. Fewer than 20 were ranked outside the top 50. And that's just in the top 10. And three of those uh, 18 golfers were last year, and they were live guys whose world golf ranking had diminished because being on the live. Mickelson and and Brooks and, and, and those guys. So – uh, I, I don't want to derail us. I just want to say, God bless Masters Week. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, let's. We got a ton to get to. We got Calipari to Arkansas. We got uh, Mark Pope to Kentucky. Uh, we got Tennessee players hitting the portal. Um, we got all kinds of stuff to get to. But let's recap uh, the Final Four last week and let's talk about the greatness of this back-to-back UConn run but first let's attack the SEC angle because Alabama balled the F out last yeah. Saturday no they, Al- Alabama Alabama played their sneakers off I mean yeah they they just they just walked into an NBA team I mean God bless hey I'm an Auburn grad, sure. but Alabama played their tails off. ass off big yeah. time. And you know what? Nate Oates coached his whistle off. Yes. I mean, he was he. They were there for the fight. They just they showed up with a switchblade, and UConn showed up with a doozy. And yeah. what do you I do? Mean, 
Yeah. I mean, they were eight of 11 from three in the first half. Well, you and I both said they had to shoot better than 50% to, to cover and be in the game, you know, within eight to 12 in the last, you know, six to eight minutes. We, we talked about that, right? Did we? Right. Or I know I said it. I said they got to shoot better than 50% from three. They were shooting like 73% from three at half and were still down by four. The uh... Uh, I went back and watched the game again on Monday and because uh, I was, you know, enjoying a few beers during the game. I wanted to watch it back with a 100% clear head Monday afternoon. And um, they played even better than I thought when I watched it again. I mean, they played incredible. Every time UConn was pulled away for a double-digit lead, Alabama, 8-0 run, just like that. They had two of those, but eventually UConn um, covered. I'm sorry. You, go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is before we talk about historical perspective, especially in the modern era, I mean, a lot of people may or may not know that the bracket got expanded in the in in the mid eight in the early eighties to sixty four five so eighty I think it was eighty five yeah forty eight sixty four and eighty five and I just want to tip the visor to Dan Hurley and those guys for being an even more ATM for betters everywhere than the LSU over or uh, Iowa State at home. I mean, they, hey, hey, in, hey, UConn in the tournament, you're living in a, in, a, in a nice house over there and you made a couple of mortgage payments in this, in this March Madness, did you not? Yeah, I mean, 12 and 0 straight up and against the spread over the tournament the last two years. And, what you know when we go back to the last the Gators team to repeat no six oh seven and the Duke ninety one ninety two teams those were mostly the same teams. I think the well, ninety two team was that or no Grant Hill was a freshman and a sophomore in ninety one ninety two what right or was uh, or no wait Hill might have been a freshman Hill in ninety two sophomore and a junior because well but he was on both teams and Thomas Hill right, was okay. too. And Hurley, and of course Leitner, Leitner. and and uh, uh, his yeah. uh, wink, wink, kiss, kiss. Brian Davis uh, was also on those teams. So, but Leitner went to four straight Final Fours, and uh, but and then and you and you're great and you're great uh, Florida teams in six and seven. I mean. That was that was green exact and, same team. and Noah and uh, Humphrey and and all those Humphrey. guys. Yeah, they, all those guys. UConn who, last time year, who, who, they who, lost their oh, go top two scores. Three or uh, three players went. Uh, but they Jordan lost Hawkins their top two playing two for the Heat. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Jack uh, uh, Andre Jackson. They lost their defensive stalwart too. Um, I'm shooting a blank on his name. My bad. Go ahead. But it was, uh, I mean, gambling notes and, I mean, 12 straight games all by 13 or more points is staggering yeah. in an NCAA tournament. Uh, I mean, you look up and I'll tell you this too, brother. Did you read the story about Dan Hurley giving an interview about how, who he recruits and he will turn down a player regardless of ranking or talent if he's been on more than four AAU teams because if that kid is going to change streams and hop ship, then he's going to assuredly jump in the portal uh, ASAP, as soon as he doesn't get enough minutes or get enough shots or get enough whatever. And he also, Hurley said, 
he's got too many negative influences in his inner circle, and I don't want that in my program. Dan Hurley is I, building this thing. I mean, brother, that guy gets it. Yeah, and, and I love how he embraces, you know, the the Ray Allens and the Rip Hamiltons. He's like, we've been running college basketball for 30 years, even though he's only been there three or four. But but he can say that because he's got two of the natties right now. So right. I just love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. and they're 6-0 and in title games. And then you look up and whose program is better? I'm not saying more historical. I'm saying better. Is UConn more of a blue blow than UCLA? Oh yes, the I mean Is in the UConn last thirty more years, of a blue blood than Kansas. In the last thirty years, is more of the blue blood than everybody. Kentucky. Hey, first off, time out. The Gators have twice as many natties as Kentucky in this century. <laughs> just had to get that out. Have, have you just been you just been sitting on that one, haven't you? I mean, I mean, hey, hey, uh, you're I, the mother hey, hen, they, they, and hey, you just hatched an egg. It did, not, it, did, it, it, did it, it did not just make its debut just then. <laughs> <laughs> that factoid did not just make its debut just now. It made its bets in ball games debut. <laughs> how many? How many? How many more uh, natties uh, in college basketball does Florida have than say? FSU. Okay. All right. Yeah. Turn and, the page. Um, You're my point guard. But hey, hey. Handle the ball. No, 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 no. I got to get a few more. Hey, the Gators' all-time record against UCLA in the NCAA tournament? 4-0. Just throw it out there. <laughs> Just throw it okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, no, okay. So, so we talk about these UConn great teams. You say they're better than the 06, 07 Gators. How do you compare them to 91, 92 Duke and 90, 91 UNLV? Now, obviously, UNLV did not repeat in 91, but they were undefeated until Leitner uh, and, and Hurley beat them. Well, I, if, in terms of my college basketball memory and fandom, which – the the first real college basketball game I can remember was Bird Magic in the title game in 79. 79. So uh I loved I loved Louisville in the 80s. I love yeah. I was the only I may be the only person who was cheering for Houston to beat NC State in 83. I loved right. the, I, they had the Georgetown teams were great. I don't know Ooh, if I have ever seen a better college basketball team, one through five, on the floor than the 90-91 UNLV bunch that went uh, Greg Anthony, Stacey Augman, Augman Larry, Johnson, Larry Johnson, George – Anderson George, Hunt. Yeah, George uh, uh, Augman. David – Stacy, I mean, the plastic hey, man. They, hey, George Ackles. I'm sorry, George Ackles. Yeah, uh, was yep. the center, and and Moses they, they Scurry were, off the bench. Yeah, and they were amazing. I think Leitner's teams were have a claim to being the greatest, but that's like saying greatest and best. Like, I think Peyton Manning is better than Tom Brady. But Tom Brady's resume is – Whoa. Whoa. Is, 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 hey, no, Tom Brady is the GOAT because he's got a resume. But if Peyton, you were going to draft Manning. a quarterback – if you were going to draft a quarterback to play, would you, would you take – would you take Brady or Manning? Brady, there's never been a star quarterback in the NFL or college history who has had more of a propensity to play at a such a lower level than his norm in the regular season in the biggest games of his existence than Peyton Manning. All right. Are you, oh, for you, life against are, are, the Gators. Do you, need to take that, do you need to take that sweatshirt off and, and get your Florida Gator, like, T-shirt going? So that we can all see what if, uh, 
No, no. No, in a postseason too. He was know. like This is another whole nother pod. This is a whole nother pod. The Brady it is. It Manning all right. pod. All right. We're gonna have to do we, that. We'll do that. We've got we've got Calipari to go. And yeah, Peyton all right. Let's go to Calipari. Okay, Calipari to Arkansas. I think it's a win-win for everybody. I, that's what I was bitching about two weeks ago, and I was saying, why won't he just leave? Like, because he could. And well, finally, Musselman created the opportunity. So I tip my cap to him. But what about this nonsense of him being the second highest paid coach in college basketball, having a lifetime contract, having not gotten past the first weekend since 2019, having done this like 36 hour dance with Arkansas uh, without resigning and then reportedly says to Mitch Barnhart, okay, what do you want to counter with? And then releases that narcissistic four minute video. I mean, that was John Calipari in a nutshell, all that stuff. What a disaster. Did we not really – didn't we deserve him holding, like, a, a, a hairless cat like Dr. Evil from <laughs> from, from the, the Austin Powers movie? He's going, yes, uh, hello, Big Blue Nation. Or a dog. I love you or a very dog. much. Now or, or I'm a going dog to the and stroller. stroller. And Tyson Chicken, and hey, they're going to get everybody. If he's got oh, yeah. Tyson Foods money, if he's got Walmart money, if Jerry Jones, if he makes a phone call to Jerry Jones, that place is going to be a problem. I mean, we're talking about rolling it back to the Nolan days. Of oh. Oliver Miller and Scotty Thurman and Clint McDaniel and my guy Al Dillard. Dude, who, who could shoot? And, uh, hey, Corey Al Beck. Dillard was Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark. I'll say it. Me and Al Dillard were shooting from Steph range when Steph was in diapers. Well, I've been saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Al, hey, Al, hey, and. Al Dillard had the longest shorts this side of the playground. I mean, he wore like coo yachts. I mean, those things were down there mid shin. I mean, <laughs> no kidding. Al, those Al Dillard. Al Dillard's in my Twitter profile. Did you know this? No, I'm a fan of Al Twitter Dillard profile? range. Al. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, you pay attention to Al. Dillard references, so check my Twitter profile. So. Yeah, because okay. Carlos Williamson uh, almost killed me. And I told that story. I mean, Carlos Williamson almost punched me in the face. Oh, yeah, no, you did tell me that. I thought you were saying he punched Al Dillard in the face. I was like, no, no, I'm no, me. Can't mess with no, he loved <laughs> Al Dillard. He hated me. Yeah, no. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't get that ass beaten. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been mad. Hey, hey, dare I say, and to spin this back to a dad joke, that'd have been big nasty, is what that would that be. That, that would have been. It would have been. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's Calipari's ideal situation because there's zero players on the roster. He can bring that whole Kentucky class, he can get like seven to eight guys out of the portal, whatever, like top 80 freshmen or, or whatever are out there if you you know he can do whatever he wants mix mix and match portal with his recruiting class and maybe another freshman or two that are out there uh it, it's gonna be a fresh start and let me ask it'll you probably go well let's, let's let's bounce a couple things off if you're reed yep. shepherd do you enter the draft or do you go to arkansas i stay at kentucky okay if I'm, uh, if I'm we know we know Dillingham has declared for the draft, but he's keeping his eligibility open. Uh, you got to believe Reeves is going to the draft. Uh, he he's, he doesn't have a choice. He's out of eligibility. Yeah, he's okay. gone. Antonio. Uh, yep. Yeah. Then you you look up and Kentucky had Duke's got the number one class. 
in America, and but Kentucky's top three or four, and it's two got, and, Alabama, and Alabama's four. You got to wonder how many of those uh, kids will follow Calipari. I think I think all of them will, or, or, or most of them will. I I, I completely agree. I with guess. You. And then you start looking up, and you mentioned the key word here is <laughs> we saw in Knoxville what one dude through one really good Don't connect one really good uh, recruit through the portal can mean for an entire program. I mean, that Tennessee team is lucky to get out of the first weekend without Dalton connect, never mind what they would have been through the season. But with them, they were a player two away from being in the final four. And so Calipari at Arkansas, it also, I mean, that's a home run hire for them. I mean, they Absolutely. they were tired of they were tired of Musselman and I think he's a very good coach. But they brought in a rock star. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, and now the biggest question is what happens in Lexington? Well, I think that the Mark Pope hire, which seems to be a, a not necessarily official yet, or at least when we started, but it going to happen i think they're just finalizing the paperwork but uh i think it's going to go over about as well as um ron zook to florida um uh or as, Billy I, like Clyde Gillespie. Say, as I like to say a fart in church because i mean you and i can giggle if somebody if somebody's sitting in a pew pardon the pun and and squeezes cheese and then the next thing you know, everybody's kind of looking around, but nobody's looking, nobody's making eye contact because nobody, nobody. wants to say what has happened. And everybody's <laughs> worried that it may have been them or it may have been the person that was sitting next to them. And there you go. Mark Pope, Farton Church. Yeah, it's not going to go over well, but it's better than Billy Clyde Gillespie. I mean, he did win a natty as a player there. He did get BYU to the NCAA tournament going from the WCC to the Big 12. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I watched a ton of BYU this year. Um, I bet he's a better game coach than Calipari. Game coach. Well, game coach. Hey, In-game adjustments. As, as far as game coach goes, uh, that's a pretty big picture of all the people that are a better game coach. I mean, yeah, yeah. hell, sure. he could he could run the motion offense, and he's got a better offense than Calipari did. Calipari like rolled the basketballs out there and said, "Hey, you guys go score. I've recruited a whole bunch of five stars. Let let's let's go out score yeah. people." I mean, yeah, being a better coach than Calipari is is not the bar. What, right. But can Mark yeah. Pope clear the bar that is Kentucky basketball? I mean, I don't know that. And I'll ask this to you, Brian. The How many schools in the SEC would trade their coach for Mark Pope? Vanderbilt and maybe Missouri and – that might be it. And that would mean Kentucky's got the second or third worst coach. In the yeah. World. And and they are they are they are the flagship program. Let's not let's not bemoan or oh far and away. They are yes. the program in yes. SEC basketball, and it's never yes. been close. I mean, Billy Donovan you know, competed with them uh, for 17 years, but I mean, they were still the cream of the, the, the Uno. They were still the Uno. How many people, how many people, you, you mentioned Billy Donovan. How many people do you think said no to Mitch Barnhart before he settled on Mark Pope? Hurley, Drew, 
I mean, Jay Wright and Billy Don. Well, first off, Billy Donovan said no to Kentucky twice when he was at Florida. Um, he came out when he was asked about it at a Bulls press conference and said he's committed to the Bulls. They would have had to wait another week for that season to end, at least a week. I mean, if they win in the play-in, it would have been two weeks. I don't think Barnhart was willing to do that. And I would imagine he knows what everybody knows is that, that Donovan has always told people he's never going back to college. And now with the NIL and Portal, I mean, that was just never happening. So I think he just got the hint with Jay Wright and Billy Donovan. Uh, and, and then he definitely got no's from Hurley and um, – uh, Scott Drew. Um, don't don't you like think you made a phone call to Tuscaloosa? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Oates released a statement before the national title game started on Monday night. He, no, I know he, through intermediaries, he, you know, expressed interest in Oates. And, uh, well, first off, Oates has got a hell of a team coming back. How is Mark Sears not considered a, a, a top 80 uh, player in this draft. I do not understand that. He's at wee. All. He's wee. He's a wee fella. Mark Sears? Hold on. He's a wee fella. He is. Mark Sears is oh, 6'1, 185. He's got tons of muscle, though. He's got plenty of speed to play point guard in the NBA. You don't think? <laughs> you Man, don't think? Joe Kitch is playing point guard in the NBA, and he's seven foot three bills. Come on. Mark Sears can play, man. Uh, so, whatever. It's Billy Alabama's Johnson's win. If six comes nine, and he's playing point guard. All right? Who Who is – I mean, uh, unless they get to play the Hawks, who is Sears going to guard other than Trey Young? And Trey Young's a fraud. I mean, I, I, don't even get me started on this. Yeah, oh, another right. conversation. Another yeah, day. a whole we'll yeah. Oh, wait. Well, I'm gonna I'm kick your ass in that pod we have about uh, Brady and Manning. I'm gonna come with stats. Oh, <laughs> take your stats and I mean, I, I, I'll give you stats. <laughs> you know what they're called? They're called the eye test. All right. And, and okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, what? um, Alabama's got the number four recruiting class coming in, and. They could conceivably be, bring back everybody except for Aaron Estrada. Now, some of their bench players have already hit the portal, which is a good thing because they want other portals. But actually, they already got the Pepperdine guard, who was a high scorer, one of the high scorers in the WCC. They already got that transfer. Um, uh, and we got to talk Tennessee transfers. Uh, Adu, uh, the other big guy, I, I'll butcher Nawaka. the pronunciation. Nawaka? No, oh, Walker. Walker. Who else? You told me a Walker, couple, Walker, couple Walker. other guys entered the portal, right? Uh, a couple, couple other guys about, entered the portal. Was reserve guards. Uh, that, uh, but you're talking about, and maybe those guys saw the writing on the wall, and that's one of the things that the portal. Uh, you got to be real careful about criticizing these kids for entering the portal. We all remember and we romanticize about uh, college sports is how they used to be. But who knows if Rick Barnes sat down with these guys. And, and, and again, I'm not reporting anything. Coach X sitting down with his team in the exit interviews at the end of the season and says, you know what? Don't know if this is working and and honestly, it's it's it it is it's good to be truthful. And if Coach X looks and says, "Hey, we're going to recruit somebody who we hope is going to be better than you," if you want to work hard and try to get on the floor, great. If not, you need to explore other opportunities. And I'm not saying anybody's pulling scholarships or anything else, but you can never begrudge these kids for looking for greener pastures because everybody knows, but nobody speaks of the very real truth that college scholarships, college athletic scholarships are year to year propositions. These are not four year yep. deals. So if, 
if you're not going to guarantee a kid four years and give him some assurances, I mean, hell, how many of those kids, including just what we talked about with Reed Shepard or the kids at Arkansas, thought they were going to play four years or two years or however long with Musselman or Calipari? I mean, movement yeah. movement is part of college sports as we know it. And to bemoan that is a fool's errand. Sure. Okay. Uh, our friends at Bet Online do not have their odds up yet to win the 2025 NCAA tournament. So I'm going to use FanDuel's. Uh, I'm just going to give you some of the top like seven or eight teams, and then I'm going to go down and give you every SEC team. So right now at FanDuel, Duke is the 11 to one favorite. Then you've got Kansas at 12 to one, UConn at 13 to one, Alabama at 15 to one. Uh, UNC and Houston at 15 to 1, Arizona 20 to 1, Gonzaga 25 to 1, and these teams are at 30 to 1, Baylor, Iowa State, and Purdue. Now I'm just going to tell you where the SEC teams fall. Uh, and actually, three of them, all three of them at 35 to 1 are Tennessee, Texas, and Arkansas. Uh, then we get Auburn at 40 to 1, Kentucky at 40 to 1, uh, Florida at 55 to one um i didn't skip over texas did i oh no you know they were in the 35 to one group okay uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's see. mississippi state at 65 to one and, and mississippi state added uh in the portal uh penn state's uh leading scorer uh clary um so they've added uh a portal guy georgia 80 to one lsu 80 to one missouri a hundred to one Oklahoma, a hundred to one Ole Miss, a hundred to one A and M, a hundred to one. That about covers it, other than Vandy, right? And here's Vandy at two hundred um, to one. All right, um, let's see. College football games of the year at Bet Online. And next week, we'll start breaking down the season win totals. So, the college football games of the year involving SEC teams at Bet Online on August 31st Georgia minus 12.5 at a minus 105 price to Clemson. I believe that game's in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, LSU minus six at USC. I believe that one's in Vegas, and it is. And yes, Mercedes Benz on the Clemson, Georgia. Uh, Texas at Michigan, that's the big house. Uh, week two, Texas minus four, minus 115 price. Uh, September 28th, Georgia minus five and a half at Alabama. And Georgia minus three and a half at Ole Miss on November 9th. And LSU minus two and a half at home to Bama on November 9th, and then non-SEC uh, on November 30th, Ohio State minus seven uh, to Michigan. Um, I don't have any thoughts on those games yet, other than Ole Miss is getting a lot of respect, but I think they probably deserve it in that Georgia only being a three-and-a-half-point home home underdog. The uh, Any opinions? Well, uh, of the numbers you threw out there, if I'm going to jump on one early, I'm going to take Texas going to Michigan. Uh, I think that's that price will be at probably even on the road a touchdown or more by the time the season gets here because I think Texas is really good. And right. but no, I mean it, it's in, it's impossible to know. And the we got portal guys. In and out, of course. Between now, of course, and all of those, all of those. So, uh, but in the in in the big picture, and I know uh, you've got some. Can Mike Tyson beat Jake Paul? Um. Yeah, if he knocks him out early. But I mean, because he's he's, uh, he's older than me. Yeah, no, Paul Paul's like a five to one favorite. 
I know, um, I know, I know, I know. But Tyson beat hey, him if he knocks him out in the first or second round. But other than that, I I'm not gonna bet on it. Hey, but, uh, I, I have Tyson bungee Tyson. jumped off a crane in Heflin, Alabama. I have ridden a bull. I have done a whole lot of crazy snot in my life. And I would never. What the hell did you bungee jump for? Why did you do that, dumbass? What? <laughs> because I'm a dumbass. Are, I will tell you. I, I'll, tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. So we get over there in Heflin, Alabama. And I'm at Auburn. And it was Sunday morning. And I don't know if I had started You're 19. drinking. Or was, yeah. No, I was 22. And. Okay. They, they, the guy, the guy running it and taking our money. It was $20. I gave him $20. He goes, how much you weigh? And I said, you I paid know. money to bungee jump. It, yeah. Oh, hell yeah, I did. And I go, I don't know, 225 And he goes, well, what is it? And he go, I said, what difference does it make? He goes, well, if you're over 230 you get a bigger strap. And I said, give me the fat man strap. I don't want to jump to my death because uh because I'm three pounds over and I snap the 225 strap. I mean, <laughs> holy cow. Just give me the fat man strap. I'm not proud. I mean, hell, put me sure. in a diaper. I don't care. I'm here to bungee jump so that I can tell everybody in America that I bungee jump. And then I rode a bull at an Auburn rodeo and that big snot blower put his hooves in the ground and kicked my ass completely across the ring like in in two seconds. I mean, I don't even know if I stayed on there two seconds. That's what she said. But it was, uh, it, it again, and I say all of this, that there was a time in my life that the most scary thing I could ever imagine was standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I think I've said this on the show. I always wanted the, the opponent to survive round one just so I could see the fear in his eyes between round one and two. Well, yeah, but I rarely got that wish. He would... What oh, the man. hell am yeah. I doing? Why am I here? Why am I here? All right, back on track. I'm going to give Bet Online's SEC season win totals. Just because we're just laying the groundwork, we're going to start discussing these at length on a weekly basis. I would imagine we'll start with Auburn and Florida next week. But here's all the numbers that bet online. I'm talking football here, obviously. Uh, season win totals. Alabama, nine and a half wins, shaded to the under at a minus 140 price. You like the over, it's plus 110, risk 100 to win 110 if you think Bama goes 10 and 2 or better. Arkansas, five and a half. Shaded to the under minus 190, the overs plus 160. Auburn, seven and a half, shaded to the under minus 165, the overs plus 135. Florida, five and a half for the second year in a row. Billy Bob Napier has got us with our lowest season win total in Florida football history. Back to back years, it still has a freaking job. Five and a half. Not only is it five and a half, it's shaded to the under at a minus 200 price. If yeah, you but it, think but it sounds, the Gators. It sounds, like, it sounds like you don't have an opinion on this. Oh, I love the under. <laughs> um, I love the under, but I don't lay minus 200 prices. But, it, I mean, how pathetic is it that if you – think florida is going to win at, at least six games you can risk 100 and win 160 that's plus 160 money this should never happen to me again as long as i live ever i should never say those words again after this off season okay georgia 10 and a half over minus 135 under plus 105 kentucky six and a half under minus 150, over plus 120. LSU, nine and a half, uh, over minus 120, under minus 110. Ole Miss, nine and a half, minus 150 to the over, plus 120 to the under. I might be interested in that over, although I don't like the minus 150 price. Um, Mississippi State, four and a half. Oh, that's going to be the second lowest to Vanderbilt. 
uh, under minus 130, over even money. Uh, Missouri, nine and a half, under minus 170, over plus 140. Oklahoma, seven and a half. Welcome to big boy football. Seven and a half flat, minus 115 either way. South Carolina, five and a half, under minus one. Oh, I'm sorry, over minus 125, under minus 105. The Vols, eight and a half, over minus 180, under plus 150. Texas, ten and a half, over minus 150, under plus 120. And, oh no, I'm sorry. Texas, the under of ten and a half is minus 150. The over is plus 120. A and M eight and a half uh, under minus one fifty over plus one twenty and finally Vandy two and a half the overs minus one sixty the under plus one thirty. All right, parting shots. Anything to say as we start to wrap this bad boy up? Uh, man, oh man, I had so many things to say on all those over unders because. There are, whoo, there's some, there's some really good value because some of those teams suck. And uh, I, I, I think you could have made, you could have made a living betting Vandy unders for the last decade, right? So, but as far as party shots go, I just want to give Dan Hurley a great big hug. Uh, thank you for uh, cleaning the slate, uh, making my uh, my bank account uh, smile. I bless you. Yeah. Uh, keep up the good work. And whew, to our Kentucky friends, good luck with that. Yes. Um, and I, I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. We both lost NC State last Saturday, but we won on UConn with the front door cover against Bama, and we told our audience we would love UConn Every minus eight. five and a half or six yes. in the finals. Yes, yes. The, 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 title game, the title game was the biggest bet I've made in a long time. It was my biggest bet of the year, and – I still cussed myself for not making it my biggest bet of my life by far because there was I, – I never had a doubt. There was no doubt. I mean – Never. And, and, never and once. You and I talked about it. You and I talked about it last week. And I know you've got some uh, UFC party shots that you want to throw out there. But that that was the exclamation point that Zach Eady is either going to be the best player in Yugoslavia – or uh, he's going to dominate the church league at your rec YMCA. So, I mean, he's he's not he's not NBA ready. Well, just the, the whole style of the NBA just does Correct. not suit him. I mean, he just he's just post up, and they just don't do that in the NBA that much anymore. Um, but I thought he played well in the finals. But Well, no. I mean, he played well for what he was. But you look back right. and how much better is he than circling back to Kentucky like Oscar Shewe? I mean, who was multiple-time player of the year a couple of years ago and now can't get a sniff. Now, granted, uh, Edie is seven inches taller or whatever it is, but – How's he going to guard Embiid or Jokic or any of those stretch four, stretch five guys on the perimeter? He just he, – he can't. Yeah. I mean, the National Player of the Year like three years ago was – I was big man Luca Garza, and I know he was in the league for – I don't think – is he in the league right now? I don't, I don't think he's No, in but the he's right killing now. it at, in the Des Moines uh, YMCA. Killing it. Or <laughs> – <laughs> he's, he's hitting jumper somewhere. He's scoring somewhere. Uh, I know that. Killing it. I mean, that guy's scoring like 35 <laughs> a game at the Des Moines YMCA. <laughs> Maybe he's overseas. Maybe he's in the G League. Who knows? All right. So, all right, here are my UFC 300 picks. Okay, my favorite pick, which you can read about on Major Wager, um, I want to put a pause on it because I got a note from a friend saying he might be having problems with his weight cut. 
is weight weigh-ins are in 20 minutes. So I might be walking back my Charles Oliveira. I need to see what happens with this weight cut. But um, check my Twitter timeline, uh, et cetera. So, but I, if the way, if he if he makes weight, I like him at plus one eighty five. In the main event, I like Jamal Hill as a plus one fifteen underdog over Alex Paella. Um, and then in the opening fight of the card, um, and this is one of for you casual fans. This is one of the few fight cards you want to watch from the very beginning because two former champions are in the very first fight on the early prelims and. If you're casual and you just don't know, every 100 event, this is the, they had UFC 100, 200, now 300. Um, they make the best cards they possibly can. There's 12 current or former champions on this card. Um, so, Oliveira plus 185, Hill plus 115, uh, and then the first fight, Cody Garbrandt plus 250. You, you notice in the underdog theme here? And then let's do a three-leg parlay with Justin Gaethje, minus 155. Uh, Zhang Wei Li uh, in the minus 480 to 500 range. And then we already have a bet on Hill in the main event. If we get to the main event and the first two legs of this three-leg parlay have hit, Hill is finishing it for us. And we already have a straight bet on him. And the parlay pays three to one. So... If the parlay is still alive, we're going to hedge back a little bit with Paella. But that's Oliver plus 185, Garbrandt plus 250, Jamal Hill plus 115, three-leg parlay, Gaethje, Wei Li, and Hill. And you, you might as well be, we be speaking Chinese to me. So, okay. I, I was with Zhang Wei Li. Um, yeah, yeah, well, and so anyhow, Brian's son, absolutely, absolutely. All right, for Jay Greason of the Chattanooga Times Free Press, I'm Brian Edwards. Thanks to Bet Online, thanks to our people at Believe, and thanks to Blake in Southeastern 14. Until next week, we'll be talking Auburn and Florida season win totals. Next week, I'm Brian Edwards, he's Jay Greason, and we are over and out.